So the rule of 70, sometimes known as the rule of 72, applies to quantities which are growing according to the rule of compound interest. And what it says is that the doubling time, the time that it takes for the quantity to double, that's growing by the rules of compound interest, is approximately given by 70 divided by n, where n is the interest rate, or it is approximately given by 72 over n. As we will see, this is slightly more accurate, but this is often used because 72 is divided by a larger number of counting numbers. And when is this rule valid is, of course, an interesting question, and it's only valid if n is not very large compared to 100. So it is perhaps a good equation if n is, say, 5% interest rate. Perhaps it's good if n is um, 7 or 10% interest rate. It is definitely not good if you have a 200% interest rate. So what I want to do in the video is, first of all, to derive the exact formula for the doubling time, and then using the technique of Maclaurin expansions to show how we can approximate it and obtain this result here. So I'll move on to a new slide to find the exact formula. So the question we want to ask is, after what time capital T does P of little t, which is given by this, double? So we're going to start at little t, go on for a time capital T, and require that it is twice this amount here. So what we have is that P of little t plus capital T, if it's growing according to this formula here, is going to be P naught times 1 plus N over 100 times little t plus capital T. And now by the rules of powers, I can write this as P naught times 1 plus N over 100 all to the little t times 1 plus n over 100, all to the capital T. And what I want to require is that this is equal to twice its starting value. So at little t, we have p naught times 1 plus n over 100 to the little t. So we demand, we require, that p naught times 1 plus n over 100 to the little t times 1 plus n over 100 to the capital T. That is the amount at time t plus capital T. That's all this is. We've just seen it. Is equal to 2 times, because we want it to have doubled, p naught times 1 plus n over 100 all to the little t. That's what we had at time little t, and it's doubled, it's multiplied here by 2. Now, if we look at this equation, we see immediately several common factors. One of them is p naught on both sides, and that we can therefore cancel. So there is no p naught dependence in this equation, and this tells us that it doesn't matter if we've invested, say, a thousand pounds or a million pounds, the doubling time will be the same. There's another common factor in here, which is 1 plus n over 100 to the little t, and that is also therefore going to be cancelled. So I'll close, cancel it here and here. And that means that we can rewrite our equation as 1 plus n over 100 all to the capital T is equal to 2. I'm leaving a little bit of room here. Now, we see that little t has just cancelled above. There is no little t dependence. So the doubling time is independent of at what time you start. So if you start an investment that doubles in one year, then it will double from January to January. It will double from June to June. So the doubling time is independent of when it starts or when you start your measurements. Now, what we want to calculate is the doubling time, capital T, and in this equation that we have here, it is a power. So what we would like to do is to bring the power down. 
And the natural way to try to do that is to calculate the logarithm of each side, because then we can use the rules for logarithms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the logarithm of both sides. So I have the logarithm here, and I'll put a big bracket around it. And here I have the logarithm of 2. And now I can use the rules for logarithms and bring capital T, the doubling time, downwards. So therefore, we can rewrite this equation as capital T times the logarithm of 1 plus n over 100 is equal to the logarithm of 2. So this tells us that the doubling time, capital T, is equal to the logarithm of 2 divided by the logarithm of 1 plus n over 100. And this is an exact formula for the doubling time. Now, what we want to do next is to look at this exact formula and approximate it for n not being very large compared to 100. And the technique we're going to use to do this is we're going to look at the Maclaurin polynomial of the logarithm of 1 plus n over 100. And we'll do that on the next slide. So I've written here the exact formula for the doubling time that we've just calculated. It's the logarithm of 2 divided by the logarithm of 1 uh, the logarithm of 1 plus n over 100. And as I've just said, we're going to calculate the Maclaurin expansion of the logarithm of 1 plus x, and I've written out here for us the formula for it. So our function of x can be approximated by the function at naught, plus the derivative evaluated at naught times x, plus the second derivative evaluated at naught times x squared, etc., etc. So what we have, therefore, is that if our function is the logarithm of 1 plus x, so the logarithm of 1 plus x is our function, then f of naught is the logarithm of 1, and the logarithm of 1 vanishes. The next thing we need to calculate is the derivative, and the derivative as a function of x is the derivative of the logarithm of 1 plus x, and this is going to be where well, we divide by 1 plus x, we multiply by, using the chain rule, we multiply by the derivative of the argument, and the derivative of 1 plus x is just 1. So therefore, our first derivative, evaluated at 0, is 1 over 1, so it's just 1. And we could work out higher terms, but for this rule, we neglect them. That is the approximation. So, this is our approximation, the logarithm of 1 plus x is. The first term, f of naught, we have seen vanishes. And then we add the derivative, which is just 1, times x. And then there are other terms, which, as I've said, we're going to neglect. So this is the Maclaurin expansion of the logarithm of 1 plus x. And if we replace x by n over 100, we have the logarithm of 1 plus n over 100 is 0 plus n over 100. So it is just n over 100 plus higher order terms. These higher order terms are all powers of n over 100. So n over 100 squared, n over 100 cubed, etc. If n is significantly less than 100, we can hope to neglect these terms. So this means that we can substitute our formula here into the formula here. And we have that our doubling time is equal to the logarithm of 2 divided by n over 100 
So that means divided by n and multiplied by 100. And this is an approximation. So on the next slide, we're going to look numerically at what 100 times the logarithm of 2 is. So a moment ago, we saw that we can approximate the doubling time by 100 times the logarithm of 2, all divided by little n. And we can use a calculator or some other device to calculate the natural logarithm of 2, multiply it by 100, and what we find is that t is approximately equal to 69.31, etc., etc., over little n. So this is just writing 100 times the logarithm of 2 and approximating it as an integer. And this is very widely still approximated further and saying that this is approximately 70 over n or that this is approximately 72 over n. The reason, as I said before, why 72 is chosen is because it is exactly divisible by a larger number of whole numbers. So this is the rule of 70, or the rule of 72. And I'd like to complete the video by just calculating an example, and then we can verify how good the approximation is. So this is our rule. So an example is the following. Let us imagine that something is growing at, let us say, 5% interest. Let's say n is 5. So something is growing at 5% interest. From the rule for 70, we see that the doubling time is 70 divided by 5, and that is 14 years. So let's imagine that we have £1,000 invested at 5% interest. It will double after 14 years. Now we can check this. What this example is saying is the following. It says that we have P of T, this is our equation, is P naught, the initial amount we start with, we've said this is a thousand pounds, times one plus five over a hundred, all to the power of little t. And if t is 14, then we would find that p of 14 is a thousand multiplied by 1 plus 5 over 100, so 1.05, all raised to the power of 14. And if we substitute this into a calculator, we can calculate what we would get. And what we find is that this gives us, to the nearest pound, 1,980 pounds. And this is clearly a good approximation to what the rule of 70 tells us. It tells us that the £1,000 would have doubled and we would have £2,000, which is in good agreement with £1,980. So this is a useful rule and we can see how we obtain it using the Maclaurin expansion of the logarithm on the previous slide. And with that, we will finish the video.